So I think that you are the first guest I've ever had that was actually featured on the Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> um, so pretty cool step for me as well. Um, thanks for being on. Yeah, thanks for having me. That was pretty cool, huh? That was honestly like, so it was weird, like that time frame when it happened. Um, it kind of, it kind of like was a big deal for my social media page because it was like not long before that I had like my first viral video on Sports Center, and um, it was at the, the one that topped off a lot of people saw. But uh, and then it was shared a, a bunch of bunch a uh, bunch of different platforms as well. But uh, yeah, it was like that week after that, maybe or two weeks after that, I got a text from one of my buddies that listens to Rogan all the time and. He's like, dude, you're just on Rogan. I'm like, what are you talking about? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure enough, I was able to find the, the clip and, and see it. And I was, that, for me, was like, you know, that felt cooler to me, I guess, just because, you know, you, you know the person. I've listened to Joe Rogan before, and um, it was awesome. And it was crazy because that wasn't the only time he brought me up. It's He's brought me up now four times, and hmm. the, the most recent time uh, was pretty cool because after – you know, every time he brings up a video of me, he, he reacts like it's the first time he's ever saw it. It's pretty cool. He's like, you know, and, uh, and then, yeah, he, he asked his, uh, his partner there that, uh, cause he said, who is this? He's like, it's a swing man. He's like, no, no, no. What's his real name? And then he looked up my real name. He's like, Jeremy Noah. He's like, all right, cool. And I was like, oh, does that mean he's going to get hold of me? Or something? You know nice. what I mean? But, but yeah, he actually wanted to know my real name, which was pretty cool. So. Yeah, I to be honest, I knew you as the swing man for a while before I actually knew your name. I mean, I knew your swing, and I was like, "Oh, it's the swing man." I see him, yeah. But I it took me a you know, and then we're talking years ago, but yeah, uh, like right when you got started, I knew you had a even going back then, you had a really big social media presence, and you were um, coming from baseball into long drive, right? Yeah. So the social media thing started back in it was around twenty seventeen was when I first got into like Instagram and stuff. And it started off as impersonations of major league baseball players. So it was something that I always did. Like, like it was kind of something fun I did around the locker room or, and things guys would always ask to do impersonations. I would even impersonate guys in my league all the time. Hmm. And, um, but yeah, that's kind of how the channel started. I posted a couple of videos, like a Robinson Cano, uh, David Ortiz and stuff. And, and they started getting a ton of views, like 200, 250,000 views. And I was a nobody on social media. And um, yeah, it kind of just, you know, right away got me into a good place as far as beginning into social media. And uh, yeah, as far as the the whole long drive thing, I think I had about 24,000, 24, 25,000 followers at the first event in Rochester in 2019. And that was just surreal for me because I was a, I was a huge fan of long drive forever. And everyone told me I should try it out. And I didn't know how to get into it. I was like, you know, I didn't know what need to go into it. So I never really pursued it until I had that viral video go up. And I thought to myself, you know, at the time I was doing a lot of YouTube. I was trying to build my channel up. I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go. I'm going to try to get as much footage as I can. I might get absolutely destroyed in this event. I have no idea. I didn't know how far I was going to hit it. Um, so but I committed to the step. I said, I'm going to do this swing um, from the start. And that's kind of what I did. And it worked out. I qualified for Worlds um, at that first event. Mm -hmm. and, and going back to it, too, it was, it was cool because when I showed up, I knew everyone there. Like, I followed Martin. I followed Kyle. I followed, you know, Ryan Steenberg. You know, I followed all these guys. And, you know, I remember James Tate came up to me, like, right away. And he did really well in the, the, the last event um, leading up to that. And he introduced himself to me. And then, you know, I, I ended up, uh, you know, doing the qualifier. A lot of, you know, you guys were there. A lot of the pro guys were there. Um, and uh, I did really well at the qualifier. Went and grabbed some some food. And Martin came down and sat with me and, like, asked me all these questions and stuff. Like, it was weird to think, like, they knew me. You know what I mean? Like, I, I knew that I was, like, big on social media at the time. Like, I had a decent amount of followers. But I didn't know they knew me like that and, and watched mm -hmm. my videos. So that was, like... It was, that was probably my first instance um, where I saw outside of my hometown, you know, people actually following me. And that was, like, that was a really good feeling because it felt like what I was doing was reaching out to people at that point. And, um, yeah, I mean, you, you know, being a part of the Long Drive community, that first, like, feeling of, of open arms, you know, 
uh, like you're just part of a big family now. That was like instant, you know, mm-hmm. you know, gratification for me, especially coming from pro ball. It's surprising too. I think that for some people that it's such a, an inviting community because everybody is kind of out there to just do their best and to kind of, you know, beat everybody else. Yeah. But we are, we also are, you know, good friends, good just to hang out with. So oh, 100%. It's, it's a weird mix. It is, you know, and I think at the end of the day, long drive, you know, coming, well, for me, you know, coming from baseball um, in baseball, there's really not much you could actually control in the game. You know, mm-hmm. you train all you want, but you're not in control of much when you're out there. So in long drive, you're in charge of how, you know, the T length you use, teeing up the ball, your setup, your swing, the timing of your swing, everything is on you. So I think long drive in the sense of a lot of us pursued a sport before long drive and we know what it takes to train. We know all this other stuff. Obviously it's all new to us. So like we find the interest and the love and, you know, the, uh, the drive to, to better ourselves. And I think a lot of us on the tee box, yes, we're competing against each other, but I think in all reality, we're all competing against ourselves to like, you know, put it all together when it means it. And I think watching each other, you know, whether they succeed in it or they don't succeed in it, um, you know, is something that we all kind of look out for each other and we're all kind of following each other along, you know, our journeys. And that's what makes a sport interesting. It makes it fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's definitely growing from what I see. I think it's, it's definitely growing, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. It is. And, um, you, you've done it in an interesting way because like you said, you came in and people knew you from your baseball and now it's like, Oh, well, people know the guy who, does the step like everybody's go, what's, you know, that's, who's that guy? What's that kind of move? And I've had so many times people like, um, for Kyle, like they're like, who's the guy with the long hair? Do you know him? And you know, for you, who's the guy with the step, the baseball step. <laughs> so you've done it a good way. And I mean, you get that brand awareness and, uh, and it works for you as well. It's not just a show thing. Yeah. And it, you know, for me, it's more satisfying for me. Cause I, I kind of made it up, you know, it was just one thing I did at Top Golf one night. It just made sense. I felt like I could create a lot of leverage and a lot of speed just doing it. And if I didn't hit the first drive as straight as I did, I might have never done it again. And that night I probably hit like five in a row. Probably the only five in a row hits I've hit that straight since. But it was uh yeah, I had my buddy record it and um after like my second swing and yeah, it was just it just took off from there. And then I remember when I started working with Bobby uh, Peterson, um, we had that discussion at one point because at one point I kind of lost the swing a little bit. And actually that was when he first kind of brought me on and, and I started working at OSPS and he, uh, you know, we had that, that talk because at the time I wasn't any better with the step than I was in my regular golf swing. And, you know, he, he said, you got to make a choice what you want to do. And I said, Bobby, I was like, I don't want to, stop doing what I'm doing, what makes me unique to become an average long driver. I was like, you know, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it with the step and I'm going to make it work. And I'm, you know, it, for, for me, that's what makes it unique for me. It's it's my own style, you know, connecting with the drive and, and winning a set with a normal golf swing for me. It just, I, I don't know. It just didn't have that same feeling. Like when I go out there and I win a set or like, you know, Going out to Worlds, from my opinion, that was the best I've done in a professional setting this last World Championship. And just moving on day to day with the swing I completely created. And I've made my own adjustments doing it. Like, Mm -hmm. I can't go off of anyone's swing. I can't go off of anyone's advice. (laughs) Like, it's crazy. The more I get away from what everyone else is doing, the better I get at my own swing. Because I I realize it has nothing to do with the golf swing that makes me fast. So, it's... uh, it's interesting how I'm learning more of that on my own. And that for me makes it more, you know, gratifying. So, yeah, for sure. What do you think? Cause you came, you probably weren't doing any training for long drive when you got started, right? No, no. I, you know, I would just hit a bucket at the range, you know, once a week or, you know, maybe twice a week before I got into that first event. Excuse me for a second. I want to tell you real quick about my favorite training aid and a sponsor of the podcast, the lag shot. It's designed with what they call lag flex technology that'll help you to create and maintain more lag in your swing, which will give you better consistency and more speed, which we all want, right? But my favorite part is that you can go out and actually hit balls with it. It's a real club. They make a driver, a seven iron, and a wedge. So you can incorporate it into your practice sessions to ingrain the better technique that it's teaching you. Once you try it, you'll see why I love it. 
Go to lagshotgolf.com slash crush or click the link in the description below to get 15% off lagshotgolf.com slash crush. And then after I didn't know what to work on. You know what I mean? I yeah. was just I just went to the range. That was really it. And try to hit it straight. That's really all so I tried to do. Do you think like if you if most of your hitting was baseball, now I'm saying, like if you're doing this now, if most of your, your practice was hitting baseballs, how do you think that would carry over? How much more specialization do you need? It's it's you know, there's a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of differences. You know what I mean? Um especially when it comes to shaping the golf ball, changing, you know, launch angles and stuff like that. Those are all things that I worked very hard on last year. Um, like this past season was more about pushing speeds and, and, and mm. building off of what I did with um, in 2022 or 2021, um, which was my first full season in long drive being that 2020 was canceled. Um, that was the year I really committed to learning how to hit a golf ball. Right. And, Again, going back to Bobby and I's, you know, working together in our plan, he, he set the parameters of what I had to do when I was at OSPS. He didn't care if I did the step or I didn't do the step. I just had to do what he was asking. And it was mm-hmm. crazy because when I fully committed to the step, I was more consistent with the step, no matter what parameters he laid out there. I could figure it out on my own. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And that's what was crazy. And that's what kind of opened my eyes. Like, okay, this is, I mean, I am making the right move. Um, but going back to your question, as far as baseball goes, you know, I still use baseball, the training tool. I mean, I post it all the time. I'm hitting baseballs off the tee. Mm-hmm. I hit baseballs way harder now than I did when I played pro ball. Um, but it's because I'm trying to learn more ways to generate power from the ground. Um, and I think the lower half movements are, are very similar when I'm just winding up and hitting the ball off the tee. Um, but obviously the spine angle changes. That's, I yeah. guess that's really where some days when I feel a little off, I can tell I'm swinging the bat almost too much and I'm not swinging the club enough. And it's kind of that balance. I got to ride and, and figure out. Um, if I, if I hit a, if I hit baseballs maybe once or twice a week and, and I hit golf balls three or four times a week, that's usually like the hot spot where, um, you know, I'm not losing feel with the golf club. Like right now I had this huge move, you know, I moved down from Buffalo, try to get down South, get to a warmer climate. And, um, there's a lot going on when you go into a move and, uh, mm-hmm. I, ba- I basically didn't hit a ball, a golf ball, I should say, for two weeks. Um, but when I got down here, like the day after we closed, I had a collab with uh, the Bat Bros, a big YouTube channel for baseball. And um, I was training, you know, for that. And I went out there. I had a lot of fun. And now I started working for a baseball company. They have a cage right there. And I'm, I'm just filming and hitting baseballs all day long. And it's fun. Mm-hmm. But I went and picked up the club, and I'm like, okay, I'm I, I got to start swinging the golf club more. So, you know, I definitely got to uh, I got to figure out the balance and and, and yeah. stay consistent. So, well, speaking of the committing to the step, I think that's probably like the mental commitment to it is probably a huge part of it. Um, but it's it's a challenge for everybody to find out like what trigger do they use or do they not really use a trigger like a visible one. Um, there was a time I was down at Bobby's. Uh, I was down there actually for a long time in 2020. And that's, this was one of those times we were having like not a great day hitting. Um, for whatever reason, I just wasn't hitting it good. And he's like, all right, run out to, there's, um, there's a water pump. If you, I'm sure Jeremy, you know it, but mm-hmm. for people listening, it's like 200 and maybe 20 yards away. There's this, like a little water pump down by a pond he has. And he's like, sprint down there as fast as you can and sprint back. And as soon as I got back, like I was way out of breath. And he's like, hit it right now. You have like 10 seconds, hit the ball. And I hit it and my speed was, I think like two miles an hour faster than before I left. Uh-huh. And I was like, that's nuts. It doesn't make any sense. It's got to be some kind of a, like a, um, I'm just not, I'm not priming myself properly for that particular day. And I think what it was in part is I was too static on the setup. Yeah. So it goes to, you know, Bobby's one of his great um, attributes as a coach is that he's seen so many different things, so many different people and ways of swinging. And I think like he's, like you said, he, I'm sure he doesn't care if you do the step or not, whatever works. Right. Yeah. And that's the funny thing working with Bob. And it's, it's the reason why I love working with him too, is, you know, right away, like when I committed to the step and he started seeing me grow, like doing it, like I would visit his shop and he could tell I'm trying to build off of what I've been working on. And in his mind, he feels like he's not doing enough with me. And like, I think sometimes when I'm at his shop, he almost feels like he's like letting me down. And like, 
Hmm. He tells me like, you know, if there's any, if you need anything, let me know. But at the same time, like <laughs> that was, that was when I first started like really growing as, as far as an actual ball striker and being able to, you know, create distance with my swing. But, um, but now we, we're kind of on that same page. It's, it's honestly like, if, if you were to break it down in percentages, it's, it's really like 80% me and 20% Bobby. Like Bobby gives me the, the parameters and, and the direction I got to go. But, mm-hmm. you know, the path for me to get there, that's that's my own path. Like we all mm-hmm. agreed it's my journey, you know, as far as swing. I keep them up to date. So if I have a mental thought that works, like I, you know, my first time, you know, I, I, was, I was over 220 ball speed my first year in the sport. I, I, I got a flight scope X3 off of um, Ryan Steenberg. And, uh, and yeah, I, I hit 220 within the first year I was there, but then, uh, as that off season after the season was canceled in 2020, I did a lot of baseball lessons. I wasn't committing as much time when I did swing. It was like at 1130 at night after I was done with mm-hmm. lessons, I was exhausted. I had no, like my central nervous system was completely shut down, which I didn't understand at the time. It didn't make sense. Yeah. Um, but but now I look back, I'm like, wow, that's really dumb. But, <laughs> but yeah, as far like I, I was never those speeds again until this past year. And I hit like, I hit something in my swing that just made sense to me. You know, I was watching all these guys like, you know, Martin and Josh, like throwing their club back faster to swing faster, which it didn't make sense to me, but I was trying to implement that in my step. And all it did was rush me. And I, I compare mm-hmm. when I explain people my step swing it's not necessarily a baseball swing as much as it is a pitching motion. So mm-hmm. like I, I was a closer in college who has a two way guy. When I balance on my right side and wind up to hit, that's exactly what I did on the mound. Like if I can, mm-hmm. I couldn't really work the bottom part of the zone and get on top of the baseball or snap off my slider effectively if I didn't balance first. And that's kind of the same. When I hit that kind of mindset, the one day, you know, I was like, you know what? Let me just take my time with my backswing. Like balance first, wind up, and then go. And I went from like 216 to 222, like overnight. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what just happened? And like, I'm texting Bobby. I'm like, dude, this is what I'm, th-. you know, I'm sending him every time I hit a new, another PR, I'm like sending him pictures and he's getting psyched up for me. And, and then, yeah. And then after that, it just kept ballooning up. I got 225 and 226. I'm like, all right, I figured it out. And that's where like, again, like reiterating with him, what's going through my mind and how I got there. Like, that's where he's learning from me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's going to be his coaching style for me is going to be much different than, you know, you guys and, and, you know, whoever else he works with. So, but it's a good well, part. The best, it. Yeah, it is. The best days are when like I start hitting and he's just like, okay, that's good. Uh, hit a, hit a draw, hit a cut, like whatever. But it's, he's just kind of like, that's good. I'm not going to say anything. Just keep uh-huh. doing what you're doing. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah, exactly. that's the best. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder though. So I've seen you hit both righty and lefty baseballs, right? Yeah. Did you yeah. do that like in, in game? Oh yeah. Yeah. I was a full switch hitter since I was 13 and that was like, mm. I was, I was a natural right-handed hitter and Ken Griffey Jr. was my favorite player. I love left-handed swing. So my brother and I would always, I have a brother, he's a year and a half older than me. And we'd always hit together every single day of the week. And our game was lefties versus righties. We'd pick mm. three lefties to imitate and three righties to imitate. <laughs> Honestly, it was two people you'd imitate. The third one was yourself, which means you could imitate whoever you wanted. But you couldn't you couldn't pick the same guys. It was like one of those things where you call somebody, I want Mark McGuire. It's like, oh, darn it. <laughs> but <laughs> but we do that every day. And that's how we learned. Like, you know, both of us learned. We're both switch hitters. Uh, but yeah, I, I fully committed to switch hitting when I was 13. So every right-handed pitcher, I hit left-handed, every left-handed. So I have way more lefty at bats uh, than mm. I did righty since I was 13 years old, being that there's more right-handed pitchers. Um, but yeah, if there, if the next question was, can I hit a golf ball lefty? Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't I don't know why, but it's uh, it gives me the realization and the respect for baseball players that can't golf because that's how I feel, you know, yeah. as far as trying to swing lefty. I wonder though how that plays into your, just like your makeup. I mean, I have to imagine that you're pretty balanced side to side, and so that has to help. There's, I mean, there's all kind. Of, like I know TPI says you should be like roughly ninety percent with your non-dominant side in terms of speed as to what you are on your dominant side, mm-hmm. and most people have a bigger gap than that. Oh yeah. But like if if you're just doing speed training and you're like so, 
Um, if you're just swinging for speed and not hitting a ball, yeah. what, what are you lefty versus righty? I honestly never swing a golf club lefty. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's, uh, and it's, and I think mostly because when I am swinging a bat, um, 95% of the time I'm doing it left-handed because of all the swings I take right-handed golf. I am trying to balance out my body a little bit. And, um, and also just the rotational aspect and the deceleration aspect of the swing. Mm-hmm. You know, if I were to hit righty with a baseball bat, it's a heavier object to me. So it's, uh, sometimes I think it's a little dangerous. And I actually went through a little bit of injuries this year, uh, with my shoulder, uh, my right shoulder, especially because I was getting so fast with my hips. And this is when I was right, right around 225 ball speed. And, um, I was swinging a baseball bat and it was like three swings. I was like 105 exit below. And I was like, Oh, I'm gonna go for my record, which is 109.9. And yeah, the very next swing, I would get after it. And I felt like, as I'm trying to decelerate through my swing, I felt mm. the strain on the back of my shoulder. I'm like, oh, that didn't feel good. <laughs> and hmm. yeah, and then after that, I stopped hitting right handed with a baseball bat for probably five months after that. Um, so, so yeah, it's something I try to be careful with, uh, knowing that it, it, I never thought I'd say it because I played my baseball my whole life. But, <laughs> but like now, swinging a bat is is technically more foreign to my body right now than swinging a golf club, just because I do it so much more. Hmm. But. The tempo thing is interesting. Uh, it makes sense. Like it seems like a pretty clear example when you consider your step and your, the way you move. Um, but even for like a, a more conventional swing, I think. Um, I mean, obviously, we've seen examples where a very, like a very fast tempo, quick takeaway, everything gives you more speed. But then if it starts to change your mechanics in terms of not maybe loading into your lead side and not. I don't know. I don't think it's quite necessarily as simple. And I'd like to hear from, from other people, um, that have, that have had success that way. But I think if sometimes if you take it back too fast, you're just going to kind of throw your body off and you're going to be off balance, like what you're saying. Yep. And I, are there any examples in baseball of a pitcher who has like a really fast, like wind up and step? I, I honestly, you can't. I mean, some guys might have a faster movement. They might drop down and look like they're being faster. But if you break down their mechanics, they're they're really loading into that trail side of their body still. Um, mm-hmm. And it's funny because, like, even you watch guys like, you know, you watch Kyle swing. Like, Kyle looks like he whips that club back and then he gets after it. But if you watch any of Kyle's videos where he's trying to help someone, you know, swing faster, one of the first things he says is try to feel the club stop at the top. You know what I mean? Like, and if he sees like someone that's almost speeding through that, that transition point, um, they're losing speed. It's almost like, and for me, this is what happened. My step was when I, when my hands were late. So I'd always like swing my leg and my, my leg was the timing for my club to swing up. That was always Mm -hmm. like the move, but it started just getting too late. So by the time I was almost falling as I was whipping my leg back and to get through my backswing and then back into the zone, I had to waste energy just to like stop and go. And my speed was happening from before I get to the top of the swing to before I'm striking the ball as to now I try to get, and I still, I still do that sometimes. Like I, I try not to, but some days it's tough for me to feel myself get loaded into that trail side. Um, but like, yeah, so my speed, if I could feel myself almost come set and I'm almost starting my downswing with no effort. And then from that point, I feel my hips and everything just fire through. That's where I see the finish is long. Like I feel like the club's still swinging me around. Um, I know the speed's happening through the ball rather than, you know, before the ball. So do you take your forward step before, like once you're already loaded on your trail side and the club is back, then are you feeling like you're stepping forward? No, it's still like, as my hands are still coming up, there is a moment where I'm already starting to stride that creates that stretch. Okay. So my hands yeah. are still loading. I remember Bobby, you know, he, even when I wasn't at my fastest, we did a slow motion breakdown of my swing and it was pretty wild. He's like, I like, this is the most loading I've ever seen someone do with their, their body with the, the leg and the hips starting to go one direction. My hands were still loading, but like, that's kind of, you know, the, the biggest adjustment for me, if you watch my swing from a year ago to now, is my hands almost load before the legs. So I start loading my hands up. They, they're slow, like loading up. I take my time because that helps me just balance on my right side. Mm-hmm. I really feel like my power loads into my trail heel. 
to like my right heel. And then um, I let those hands get up and high before I feel everything kind of like go. And mm. I want to feel as relaxed and as controlled as I can. There's like a breathing process I go through, um, going to the top of my swing and then into my swing. So like I try to take care of all those things and feel relaxed doing it. And it's, it's wild because I looked back at, you know, at the world championship and this is like, this is something I got to work on. This is like one of the things I got to work on is that adrenaline rush when you get in. And this is what most long drivers do. You know, that adrenaline w- rush rushes people's backswings all the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? People are just rushing through it. And I look, I'm looking at like sessions at le- leading up to world where I was like hitting 220. I'm like, okay, if I was way slower on my backswing. Like I'm telling you, like. I probably had another second and a half, two seconds to swing hmm. before. And I'm looking at world. I'm like flying back, even though I was, <laughs> I was striking it good. But I'm looking, you know, I think I maxed at like 215 ball speed. And uh, the speeds just weren't there. And it was, it was wild because even the day before worlds, I was at the range. And I was, I hit my, my, I only took, I think, 25 swings just to, you know, it was more of a prime thing two days before worlds. And, um, yeah, it was like my I was living between two sixteen and two nineteen the entire time. Like I wasn't dropping. A miss it was two fourteen, and mm-hmm. and then looking at that those videos from that day to World Championship, like I was so fast with my backswing. I'm like, what was I doing? Like it felt slow to me at mm-hmm. the time, but in all reality, it wasn't slow at all. It it reminds me of kind of an older style of swing. Like if you look back at the World Championship maybe in like the like very early 2000s, you mm-hmm. had a lot of guys that, I mean, because the sport was a little different then. It was, yeah. you know, you didn't, you weren't on a shot clock. You could take your time. They were more golfers who hit it far rather than like really, really specializing. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of them would have like a very slow takeaway. Mm-hmm. And like David Mobley was on an episode here and he says like the bigger the ball, the slower the backswing. And it's just funny to me how you can find examples where then, you know, Martin or someone else would argue, no, you like quicker the backswing yeah. and faster the swing. Yeah. And I guess it's just individual, huh? Hey, you know what? It's funny you say that because watching Martin's recent videos, he's like, hmm. you know, he's putting up over 230 and I think he's using a softer shaft if I'm not wrong. But, um, but yeah, as far as his backswing, I noticed right away that he was taking a little more time on his backswing to let the club set for him. And, and it seems like he's posting way more 230 plus videos after that, after, right after world. But because I, I, I'm a fan of the sport, like I'm huge in the social media. So like, you know, I've watched a lot of Martin videos. There's a couple of Martin videos that get me amped up watching him chase ball speeds and stuff. But, um, I, I like, I'm, I know what his swing looks like and I've seen him after world and, mm-hmm. And there's definitely a difference in his tempo with his backswing that I've seen. And I think he slowed it down just a hair and mm. it's getting him set a little, which isn't good for all of us, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's like I said, I think everyone has their own tempo. I don't think there's one true solution. If you could swing it fast back and still get set and it works great. But in mm. my mind, and for me, it, it just didn't work at all for me. So when you when people say to let the club load or let it set and let it take its time at the top, I feel like that's one of those things where if you're trying to do it, you're not really going to do it very well. It almost has to just happen. Yes. As a result of other stuff, right? Like so for you, what is it is it the step forward that creates that separation and and makes it load? It's more like it's it's almost like a um it's tough to really explain. Um it almost starts with a balance on my right side. Like I almost got to feel like I'm completely balanced on it. And it's more so like it allows my hands to get to a point towards the top of my swing before my body goes. Cause if my body goes too early mm-hmm. or a hair too early, I have to rush the, the my hands at the top. So, yeah. um, so that's where I kind of find my tempo. And I, I, you know, that one of those texts I sent to Bobby is like, Hey, Today, I, I was struggling with speed, and then I committed to balancing and really, like, overemphasizing taking my time on the right side of my body just for, like, five to ten swings, and then I found my temple there. Like, getting as almost as slow as possible at the backswing to find that, that connection of where my hands are versus my hips. And um, um, 
Yeah, it's weird. Like like today, for example, I you know, I was at work and I hit a lot of baseballs today, like <laughs> way too many baseballs. And I got into this mindset. I, I did a righty versus lefty exit below contest and I was like almost battling with myself. And then I was planning on swinging and hitting golf balls after. And I'm like taking swings. I'm like, oh, my goodness, I am. I'm done. Like, I have nothing left in me. And and it was like one of those things. I was like, all right, well, let me just, you know, I'm just going to work on tempo, like getting through my swing and stuff. But my legs were so tired. It was tough for me to even control my weight on my trail side. So after like 20 swings, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do more damage than anything. So I just put the clubs away and I was like, let's get some rest this weekend. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good idea. It's a hard uh, line to ride, but I, I would imagine a righty versus lefty would take it out of you pretty fast. Oh, hundred percent. Oh, it did. <laughs> I feel like the biggest area of improvement that I've had, um, in the last few months, and it was after worlds, unfortunately, where I really kind of dialed it in for myself, but is swinging hard versus swinging fast and finding for me what my technical tendencies are when I swing hard versus kind of allowing myself to swing fast. And it's, it, it's, it's been a, a really interesting process because I can, I can relate to a lot of what you're saying with really letting it, like letting it take its time, getting into that trail side. But then my problem was that I would kind of stay there. I would stay on the trail side. And if I would go into the lead side at all, it was just kind of like half hearted going forward. And yeah, my, my foot would still move out of the way. So it kind of looked like I was loading and pushing hard off, but it was, it was not as much. And now the numbers, I haven't, I haven't checked any force plates in the last couple of months, but Mm-hmm. It's got to be a lot higher, and I know the speeds are are going up. So that's a, that's uh, always good. <laughs> it is when always go good. Up, it is go always up, good. That's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, and it it also I think is just a better. It's a more consistent strike as well because yeah. I'm not. It's almost like I like I was losing my balance on the other side of what you were doing. Like so, if you weren't taking your balance on the backswing and loading into your trail side, it's like I was kind of losing my balance going through and just kind of like you know. Yep like hoping that I would time it up right. And that, I mean, I did time it up well enough uh, at times, but now it's like much more consistent. It feels like. Oh yeah. And it, it's funny so. you say that. Cause like that was, this was another big turning point for me mechanically with my swing is like with my normal golf swing, I always felt like if I could get faster with my normal golf swing, I could translate it into the step. However, um, that was not the case at all. Like that started with the fast back swing, totally destroyed my rhythm with my step swing, but also the vertical movement. So you're saying like, you're trying to get to your lead side more to to create that vertical movement and prevent yourself kind of like flying open and pulling off the ball. Um, So where, you know, you take a traditional golf swing or long drive swing, you know, that trail side load, and then almost like that, that lateral movement, into that rotational and vertical push, all of that creates that club to whip. Well, with the step, on my fastest days, when I pull back, I, my lateral movement, my rotational movement is almost off the charts. And once I like committed to that and I knew that, I, I try not to create any vertical movement in my swing because that vertical movement caused me to bail out on my left side, which that's like once that, that left side hit, that's my breaking force. And Mm -hmm. because I have so much lateral and rotational movement, that breaking force is all I need. And that's what allows me the consistency of keeping my head down and and just letting the club do its work. So on my fastest days, if you look at my front foot planting, like it plants hard and you see that club come through. And then right after contact, you see me open up that that toe and and then, you know, my front leg comes off the ground and uh, I spin on my back leg. So, mm-hmm. but I am applying force to my front side, but it's a much different move. And when I was getting good with the vertical force with my normal swing, it was killing my step swing, consistency mm-hmm. and speed. And once I realized that, and I just stopped watching videos and stopped learning how to do it. Um, and then also limited the amount of regular driver swings I take to get warmed up. Then it was like, it was crazy. Cause even like, the last few events leading up to worlds into world, like I would be, I would hit with my step on a course and mm. it just felt way better. Like I could control the swing. I just hit this nice, pretty, you know, five, 10 yard draw and I could use it. And, um, and yeah, like I said, that was, that was really a big eye opener for me. I love what you said about the lower body breaking and then everything accelerating through, because I think I've seen so many times on, you know, golf commentary, whatever it is, the, 
you're hearing the hips should be like pulling you through. And so the hips are open, 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 and everything's kind of following. But then if you do that, you don't get any speed. Like your hands can't, you literally can't accelerate. If your, if your upper body or if your lower body is so far ahead of your upper body, you can't release through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe it, it works for some people. And of course you can look at examples, but if you're looking at what you see, it's a cause versus effect kind of argument. Like, are they trying to do that? Or is that, does that happen almost like on accident and they're trying to do something else? And I think for anybody listening who wants to get more speed, if you're, you know, not in our competition and you want to get more speed, do what, what, what Jeremy just said, which is let the, the lower body, um, be like a snapping force for the upper body then to really accelerate through. Mm -hmm. Cause that's where all of the speed comes from. If you could think about like, if you didn't have any arms and you're just, and you have like a golf club sticking, or like, let's say you've got a golf club sticking up from under your arm, you're not going to be able to swing it very fast, right? Mm -hmm. You need the whip of the upper body going through. So okay. that's probably why I would guess probably why the step is so effective. Yeah. And like I said, there's, I'm still learning every day. I'm learning more about it. And, um, and you know, that's like something for me when I was doing this stuff, you know, I get videos all the time throughout the week of baseball guys trying to step. They're like, why do I hit it so much better with this? It's like, cause that's, <laughs> that's more of a natural move for you. It's and like yeah. I said, that's like someone winding up to play long toss or something. Like that's the move you make with your lower half. So like, it's easy. And that's where, you know, you take like a baseball guy and you try to create vertical movement. Like in baseball, you don't do any vertical movement to hit a baseball. You know what I mean? You don't mm -hmm. see guys front foots coming off the ground before they're hitting a the ball. It just doesn't make sense. Um, but all the guys with the ball the hardest, you see this strong force put into their front side and then a oh, yeah. firm front leg right at contact, that straight leg, just nothing else is breaking and then everything rotates. So that's the move I'm creating. That's what makes most sense for my body. And, um, and yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's in, in one way it's cool, but in another way it's not because I can't learn from anyone. I can't, you know, watch <laughs> Kyle hit 236 and watch his video. Like, and I don't me to learn something from this. Like I'm not gonna learn anything from watching, <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's the part where it, it can get a little, you know, um, irritating because in baseball, I'd watch baseball mm -hmm. players and learn something from them. You know what I mean? But this is my own thing. Mm -hmm. I don't have anyone to learn off of except for myself. So. Yeah. Well, it's probably a better way to do it. I think there are many stories of um, people who have been, who have received advice, very well-intentioned advice, but maybe it um, had a, had a, you know, counterproductive effect. So if you're finding it your own way and clearly it's working, stick with it. Yeah. And I agree. And that's where you, you mentioned the hips opening up and like the hands pulling, like when I look at hip rotation and stuff like that, like Kyle, no one really matches what where Kyle's hips are pointed before he even hits, you know, hits the ball. Like his belt buckle is almost straight down the, the middle of the fairway. And it's insane how much hip torque he creates. But then you look at a guy that's mm -hmm. equally as fast. You look at Justin James and you look, when he plants that front foot, like his belt buckle is almost still, it's nowhere as close to rotating open. It's almost like he starts at downforce in that rotation. All of a sudden his, his hips just stop, but there's so much force that's coming through his mm -hmm. upper body and his hands are so fast. Um, that everything just whips through. So like, so again, every body type's different. Like Justin and Kyle are way different body types, you know, but they both make it work. They both, you know, obviously are very good at what they do. So, um, so that's where, when it comes to learning your own swing or learning my swing and stuff, like everyone's body is different. So definitely it's good to experiment, but it's not something that like, and this is advice for anyone that's watching, you know, if you try something out, um, and you watch someone that does it really well and it's really killing your swing, it, you might not be the the body type to be doing that move. So, mm -hmm. but that's one of the things I think that makes teaching golf or teaching long drive probably so hard is all of the exceptions. And I, I was just talking with Zach Holton last week, mm -hmm. how we're already exceptions. We're already not like a normal golfer. So to try mm -hmm. to start from that point and then say, Oh, well, here's an exception of the exception. You know, how do you come up with like a hard rule of this is how you should swing. This is how you can swing faster. I don't think you can. Yeah, there, there's, yeah, there's no rules. And I, and that's yeah. where, even with me, and again, you know, I said sometimes it's, it could get a little frustrating not being able to watch someone and learn from them. But at the same time, like I compare it to baseball. Sometimes I watch them and I get so overwhelmed with information that, you know, it could mess me up where mm -hmm. now with my swing, once I got that, that like freedom of thought, like I can't learn anything from watching anyone like that almost freed me up. It really did. And that's where like, 
that's when my speed started jumping. I'm like, I could be as slow as I want back here. No one cares. No one's going to argue with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's where like, it really freed me up to just experiment. And, and that's, yeah. that's, what's really cool about it. So let's talk about the lower body action a little bit more, um, in terms of the lead foot and trail foot and moving. Yeah. So it seems like it's really common in baseball to have, you like like what you do well kind of like what you do you plant that lead foot really hard and maybe the trail foot moves out of the way mm-hmm. or the trail foot moves um away from the ball mm-hmm. in golf that's that's pretty rare you'll find a few long hitters that do it away scotty scheffler is a great example of a, of a great player who does it um actually again zach holton speaking of mm-hmm. of him his lead foot does not move much Sean Fister, kind of the same way, but it's very uncommon. Mm-hmm. Justin James would be an example maybe of both feet moving, but yeah. the most common way, right, is to have your lead foot kind of sweep back in that arc. Yep. Why is it is it just the vertical plane nature of golf versus baseball that that makes that more prevalent? Yeah, and yeah, it's the timing of how the weight is distributed into that front side. So like the timing of it is different where like um, like you said, like what you're kind of trying to work on and get into is like get into your trail or your front side a little sooner. Um, that helps you create more vertical force. You know what I mean? If you don't get to that front side in time, you're going to have to hang back more and, and get through your swing. So, um, but like with, with baseball players, and I know it's that about Zach, you know, Zach and I hit uh, for a few days before worlds and stuff. And I'm like watching him. He's so fast and he's so strong. And then you watch his lower half action. It's like nothing, you know, like your common long driver and stuff like that as far as foot, which, you know, I don't know if it's something that would benefit him or not. You know, it might just Mm -hmm. how his hips fire. I don't think there's really a, uh, you know, an answer to whether someone would benefit more from creating more vertical force or they're going to be faster, you know, putting those brakes on with a planted front foot and letting the club do the work. So, um so, yeah, I mean, as far as, as me and baseball, pitching, uh, hitting, it's a hard planted front side. That's your braking system. So, like, as you're delivering that pitch, you ain't springing off that front side. That's just braking. Oh, yeah. And same thing when you're hitting, you know. When you're, when you're, and you look at the guys like Mike Trout, um, Bryce Harper, and stuff like that, their, their back foot comes off the ground when they hit. And that's just, that's the reaction force, how much, you know, force they're putting in with their trail hit rotating and that front side breaking and it's just picking up that back foot. So, um, and that's where you see like kind of, you know, those rare golfers that do that, uh, is just because of the timing of how that, that club's delivered versus their, their front trail side breaking or, or vertically moving. Do you think if you were going after like a really low pitch that you probably shouldn't be going after, would you ever have the, the lead side kick out of the way? I don't think so. I mean, I've taken thousands of baseball swings. The low and in pitch is what I hit the hardest. Um, mm. If I'm trying to set some exit below records, but no, I mean, I watch my swing and honestly, like the way I swing a bat, and this is what's crazy about my, my body. And this is what like was so infuriating for me in 2021 when I was like, I, my speeds, when I tell you my speeds were slow, I was slow. Like I remember one time at Bobby shop, like, I couldn't even hit 200 ball speed. I was like, hmm. what is happening? Like, I didn't, I had no idea. But my baseball swing at the time, I was hitting the ball 107 miles off, 107 miles an hour off the tee. Like now I'm 109, but that's in the same ballpark. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But with a golf club, I was only, barely, I could barely hit 200. But like when I watched my lower half fire and, and Bobby probably still has the footage in his thing, like it looked like I was doing nothing with, the club like when I had a club in my hand I could not my lower half to shut down it was just it wasn't working like hmm. the time it was it, and then when I tell you this was strange and when I when I had Bobby in a moment where he was just he was completely lost <laughs> like I told I remember telling him he's like dude you gotta fire your hips you gotta fire your hips I'm like I want to fire my hips I was like if I had a baseball bat and I reached over and I grabbed a, a I don't know if it was a bat or a stick or something and I got in a stance and my history just went, woo, <laughs> I fired through. He's like, do that. I was like, I want to do that. And that's where I think something with the timing of my hands getting to the top. And, and it was almost like my body was telling me, you're not ready to swing. And, like, it was just mm. the hands were just flailing at the ball. And it was like, it was such like a, a blockage in my brain 
And it was definitely a frustrating time for me, for sure. But So it was a mental thing, not just a nature of the nature of it having, you know, being like a 45 degree angle roughly versus swinging horizontally. Is that it? Uh, it, it could have been. Well, now I look back. Yeah. I, I look back at it and I watch even videos like, cause like Bobby's got those videos from the side, but I have videos of me like around those same times when I was going and I was struggling with speeds, like locally, every, everything had to do with letting my body set. If I let my body get set, I, I'm just as fast as anyone. It's, and that's the confidence I feel when I swing. Um, I feel strong. I feel fast. And all those swings I, I watch, I mean, I have a lot of footage of me hitting and mm-hmm. trying to figure it out. I did not give myself any time to set. There's no trail side load, almost none whatsoever. So it's almost like I'm pogo sticks or like you just go to your knees and try to swing. Like that's what my lower <laughs> half felt like I was doing. And, um, yeah, so like when I was able to kind of slow down my backswing, like trust that I could get there, let the hands load and go, it, it changed my world, honestly, last year. And that's where I got like my control aspect of my swing too. Cause like, I think I was still like building my swing throughout this whole season. Um, I did hit those speed plateaus that I want to get back to and, and figure out like, you know, even now, like on my fastest days, I'm not you know, I'm, I'm getting towards that 220 range, but now nowhere's near that 225, 226 range. Um, but, but yeah, like I, I got to figure out what it is that's still breaking up those things. But the cool thing is like, even on slow days is, is some of my fastest days through most of the year last year. So, so that part, I know I'm getting faster. I'm growing. I know this isn't the time to peak in speed anyways, but um, it's always good to figure out those little things to add one or two miles an hour each session. So, for sure. Well, and I would agree with you. It's not the time to peak in speed, but Kyle just set the yeah. record. So <laughs> maybe, maybe it is. He might not be peaking though. So who knows? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Have you done different um, pitching workouts to try to help long drive speed? Like I know I've seen Tom House's stuff with towel drills and throwing yeah. different weighted stuff. I, I Honestly, I wish I could. Um, my last year pro ball, uh, I was going to be a two way guy. So I was on the mound. Um, in spring training and, uh, I ended up, I ended up hearing that pop in my elbow in spring training my last Uh, year. So I was out for like two months of the season and I knew it was going to be my last season. So I kind of rushed back through the, you know, um, physical therapy and stuff. I didn't go get, I knew I tore my UCL, but I never got it checked out. It might not be fully torn because I, after pro ball, I was still playing men's league. I was able to throw the ball. I mean, granted, I, I was like a, I was a mid nineties guy, like all through college mm. and pro ball, I could still get up to like, you know, close to 90, but only for a few throws before it starts getting fatigued. So like pushing myself to throw wasn't really a thing I've done since 2015. So, mm. um, but like, even after that, like what I was explaining earlier about my shoulder injury, swinging the bat, it actually affected me throwing a ball. So like ever since then, mm. I haven't thrown a batting practice pitch or anything because like getting that, that high you know, external rotation of my shoulder. There's like something definitely not right back here, but it's not irritating my golf swing. I actually started swinging a bat again, right-handed recently. Um, I've been posting videos on my social media page uh, doing it, but um, so I know it's, it's healing. It's getting better. I've been doing some of the therapy stuff. I've been through some, you know, smaller shoulder injuries before, I'm, you know, trying to strengthen it a little bit, but, but yeah, as far as, you know, your question doing throwing stuff, I haven't done anything, but I wish I could, I really do. It's interesting to hear like what the, you know, injury history of everybody is and then kind of see how that looks in their swing. And for you, like, it seems like at the top of your swing, you're, you have a fairly um, tight angle with your arm. Mm -hmm. It's not 90 degrees, right? Like, so at the top, you're a little bit, I wonder if that's because the external rotation is painful. And so you're kind of swinging within. Yeah. I actually had a post about that from worlds. Um, because the day I was at 226, I was much wider. And mm. that's where, like, and, yeah, I, that was my whole post. Is my feeling is my body. And it wasn't, it, nothing hurt back there. But whenever little things like that happen, it's because your body's trying to protect something from hurting, mm-hmm. you know. And I didn't realize it. And I look back, yes, I was too fast in my backswing. But I'm like, okay, I was too fast. But I was, like, a lot slower than what I know I can be. Um, but, yeah, that was the width of that angle um that you just brought up was was 
a big thing for me. And, and that's the one changing factor from that time I put up a 226 mm. to then was the shoulder injury. So, uh, the, and, and this is not as I, I had posts before about the scap load, you know, a lot of golfers, like you're taught, keep that elbow in, keep that elbow in, but you look, you know, getting to the top swing, getting that high, you see the elbow flare out. And I've, mm -hmm. I've had that, you know, that's a baseball move to have that, you know, flared elbow. And that's a power move for me. So, yeah. So like, if, you know, getting the shoulder healthy, being able to get my hands higher. Um, those are all little things I am working on this off season. Mm. It's fun to see. I feel like right now, maybe because of TrackMan and whatever flight scope, all that that we've, that it's been out for a while. It does seem like there's somewhat of a predominant theme in coaching now. Like, well, we think you should do it this way, but you know, who knows, maybe mm -hmm. it, it works better. And it, it's nice to kind of see that realization because exactly like what you're saying, if you're not trying to do it like somebody else, because you feel you like you have to, not because it's helping you, um, you'll just be freed up and you can find your own style, your own way. Yep. And it's, it's changing and it's a nice way instead of thinking, Oh, you've got to be exactly right here at position three. And you've got, you know, it's nice to have that that freedom to be yourself. Oh yeah, it is. And that's where, you know, taking myself coming from a rotational sport already, you know, I, I do have things that other, you know, long drivers don't have. Um, but at the same time, you take long drivers that play golf their whole life. They have, you know, attributes I don't have. So to maximize what I have and learn from it and figure out how to build and make myself like, you know, do those things at a max uh, efficiency is, is mm -hmm. really the goal for me, you know, and I think, you know, if I could do this again, like every year, just keep moving up the ranks in long drive with the swing that I'm creating, the the tweaks I'm doing, the changes I'm making. Um, and I note all of it. Like I know everything I've done to my swing from the start to now um, and become something that's it's a step-by-step -step to teach someone. Cause again, it's like it, if it works, if I'm hitting balls in the grid, I'm not having OB sets. I'm, you know, I'm winning sets. I'm placing well in events. Um, you know, no one really could argue and say like, oh, it's ridiculous. Like you can't do that. It's like, well, I am doing it and I'm really good yeah. at it. You know what I mean? So um, that was kind of one of the goals with my swing too, is to take guys that maybe they don't, they go out in the golf course, they don't even pick up the driver because it's so frustrating for them. It's like, hey, you don't mm -hmm. have to swing like a golfer to hit a driver. You know what I mean? So so that's sure. kind of one thing I thought would be cool down the line to be able to teach people. Yeah. Yeah. What have you found in baseball and in long drive as far as time in the gym? Like what workouts have been productive? What's been counterproductive for you? Stuff like that. So I actually, like, I think my situation is extremely unique. So uh, it was Christmas of 2021. So this was, you know, after the season, that Bobby and I agreed, like, I'm not going to win anything. I'm not going to come close to winning anything. I'm going to use that first year to just get time on the grid and learn how to flight the ball and, and just build throughout the year. So that was my commitment in 2021. But then um, after that, I, I was flighting the ball how I wanted to. I was finally hitting a good draw. I could fade it if I wanted to. But a draw shot was my stock shot, and that was my goal for that year. And um, – so when I was looking to push speeds, going to the gym question, I knew for my swing, like it was my own technique. And you look at like pitchers out there, you look at even golfers, like some of the fastest guys aren't necessarily the strongest guys or anything mm -hmm. like that. And I think that through that whole year of 2021, I was working out consistently and I was strong in the gym, but it wasn't translating to speed at all. So like mentally, I knew that my speed was going to be created through technique. So like Christmas of 2021, I stopped going to the gym. So this entire season, I didn't lift one weight. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't step foot into a gym. Um, and I'm not kidding. When I say I did not lift at all, I did not lift at all, which is weird for me because my whole life, I was a gym rat. Like when I played pro baseball, when I played college ball, you'd see me in the gym twice a day. Like that's the guy I was. and. Um, so mentally, it was tough for me to just drop that. But I mm -hmm. fully committed to the swing. I fully committed to what I was doing. And I said, I want to get as fast as I can. I, my goal is to hit 220 without working out. And that was my goal. Because I knew I had the move to create speed. And I could see what I could do with a baseball bat versus your, you know, even the, some of the strongest hitters 
out there. Like I could create some serious speed with the bat. So like, there's no reason why I can't figure it out with a golf club. And um, so that was the commitment I made. I surpassed my 220, got past 225. And now this year, I've learned from what I have to do to get to that point. So now I started working out a month ago, but then we ended up, we found a house that we loved in South Carolina. Everything moved really fast. We closed within a month. So it was packed. I have a home gym. So I packed up my whole gym. You know, I still don't have it up. It's supposed to be in the garage. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty set on turning the garage into a golf simulator and gym now, but, um, but that's going to be some time. So I, I haven't worked out in like three weeks now, which is kind of, Especially today, like I swung so many baseball bats and, you know, 20 golf swings. I'm like, <laughs> my body is just cooked. Mm. And I'm like, man, I got to get in shape. But, but yeah, so that's my goal. This that's year. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, that's very interesting. I, I feel like we should put a disclaimer and tell most people that they probably would benefit from working out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I had a, a really good conversation with Bill Miller, who coaches a ton of baseball players. And he'll do like, much more specific styles of training, throwing lighter implements, measuring um, rate of force production, max output in, in kind of specific moves. Like he'll, he has this um, like a crane scale or whatever, mm -hmm. and he'll, he'll put it onto um, like a pulley system and somebody will pull kind of from this position. So like you're in your stretched move and you're trying to pull through. So it's, it's, if somebody can't, if they're just listening, it's like, I'm almost um, half the way down in the backswing and I'm just pulling with my left arm. Um, and he's found like incredible increases in, in speed for baseball. And I think he's getting into long drive, I hope. Um, but I've been putting a lot of that stuff into my training as well. Cause it's, it's too easy sometimes to just go and, and like lift like a bodybuilder or power lifter or whatever, yeah. which there's a time and place for that. Mm -hmm. But the really specific stuff is where I've had more benefit. I know Ryan Gregnall is doing kind of a similar thing. Um, and then, of course, it's fascinating to hear that you don't, you haven't been working out at all, and you've been getting better. So, yeah, and that's that's the part of it is you know being that it's not a traditional golf swing. Like I had to learn my swing, mm -hmm. and 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 for me, I knew how to swing a bat hard, and a bat is a heavier object, you know. So like you put, um, you know, I, I swing a, a thirty-one ounce bat. If you put a softball, a twenty-five ounce bat, in my hand, I'm like crazy fast with that because it's so much lighter it's the same thing with the golf club for mm. me so like when i was you know if i'm swinging the golf club as fast as a an average long driver or like a below average long driver but i'm swinging a baseball bat that much faster than most of the base people in the baseball community there's something wrong there you know what i mean technique wise and that's mm. where it wasn't a strength issue the strength and the speed was there i just didn't know how to translate it so like where instead of me cutting a hitting session somewhat short to get to the gym, you know, being that I do have a daughter now and, you know, I have a family. Um, or another thing too, is I realized as well, just with my lifestyle of working two jobs, you know, you know, that normal long drive issues of trying to build up your bank account to be able to afford to go. <laughs> but as far as like um, the scheduling portion, right. When I was working out in 2021, I was consistent. However, my workouts were at 7 a.m. before I'd start work, which means when I was given lessons till 10 o'clock at night and trying mm. to hit, and I go home and eat dinner at 12 and fall asleep by 2.30 to wake up at 7, I didn't realize how much I was killing my central nervous system through a, and then it wasn't a month, two months. This was like five straight months of making really good money and killing my body doing it. Mm. And I was like, well, if I get to the gym this morning, I'll be in a good good you know spot physically it wasn't i was actually losing more by doing that you know not getting good sleep um it, my advice you know what i mean like yes the gym is important you are absolutely correct like there are workouts designed to get you rotationally faster get you stronger being able to like have a full session where you take 150 swings and not be dead you know what i mean like that's important if you're trying to learn how to get faster however what I've noticed too, and it's a very overlooked part of getting faster, getting stronger, getting better is diet and rest. So like the sleeping part of it is I keep telling everyone that's, that was the biggest change for me. Um, in, in terms of like stepping up to a golf ball on a training session and being in the moment and being there and ready to hit 
if I didn't get good rest, like consistently, I felt sluggish. I felt like tired. It was tough to get the motor going. Mm -hmm. But, um, but if I got good rest, then I was able to just, I'm sorry, I lost you there for a second. But if I had, if I had good rest, um, the night before, you know, I could feel myself, I could see the speed start climbing faster and, uh, through that session and I'm able to push myself more and I'm able to stay focused longer. I'm able to breathe more controlled and, um, and yeah, and, 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 and kind of building off of that, the mental part of it that you don't even think about a lack of rest does to you. So I'm a piano player. I play piano my whole life. Um, I play by ear. I've been playing by ear since 2010 when I went to college. So I, I know hundreds of songs off the top of my head, but when I sit down and play the piano, some days I'll sit there and I'm like, I'm scratching my head up. I'm playing a song I've played a hundred times or thousands of times. Like, why can't I remember this? And then I look back and then I'll have a training session later that day and I'm slow. And mm -hmm. then I'm like, well, what happened last couple of nights? Oh, well, I averaged five hours of sleep the last three nights in a row. Like I'm not, I can't even remember things. I'm like, I'm dragging. And again, like when I, when I, when I have three days in a row where I have at least, you know, seven hours of sleep, between seven and eight hours of sleep for three straight days, I am very fast on that fourth mm. day. Like that's what I've noticed about my body. Um, that is, in, in my opinion, something I overlooked my entire life. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's, that's also, if, you, if you're out there and you're like, oh man, I need to, you know, get to work and you get to the gym, I need to get to this, like, it's good. Yeah, it's good that you're doing that thing and you're working hard. But if you're trying to be as fast as you can, rotationally fast, this isn't like basketball. It isn't like Kobe Bryant being the first one in the gym and then last one to leave. And like, you know, that's basketball. This is you have to be rotationally as fast as you can. You know, your central nervous system has to be firing at all times. You know what I mean? Um, that's where balancing all of it and figuring out what works for your body is. is it's a it's a Rubik's Cube. Yeah. But, you know, it involves all of it is a big piece. Absolutely. If you don't have the rest and recovery, proper nutrition, you're not going to go anywhere. But mm -hmm. not to like uh, – what I was trying to say as far as the disclaimer for working out, because like you said, you've put in the years of two-a-days or hard, hard days in the gym. And so you have that framework where mm -hmm. then you can specialize and you're still going to keep a lot of the progress you've made. And then it allows you to just peak and peak and peak and peak. But if you had not put those years in in the gym of getting stronger, more muscular, um, your injury prevention would not be as good. And you're also, you just wouldn't be able to max out as high in terms of speed. Mm -hmm. So I think for most people listening, if they're not one of the fastest guys in the world already or women, there is going to be a, probably a bigger demand to go and get in the gym um, just to follow the same kind of course of action as what you did. Yeah. And I think, I honestly think that's why my shoulder and actually both shoulders aren't really feeling great now. I've never really had shoulder issues up until this past year. And I think a lot of it has to do because I am getting a lot faster as swing baseball bats left-handed and the club right-handed, my deceleration muscles and my ability to, to, you know, withstand that much speed is starting to break down. And that's like, I, I think my body's showing me signs of that. Um, and that's where I have mm -hmm. to get back and I have to get strong. Cause I, even that month that I was working out, um, you know, I was getting steady on the diet and eating well, like after like even two weeks when I would go to the range, I felt fantastic. Like mm -hmm. I felt really good. I felt strong. Even if I was sore from a workout, I felt strong. And like, even after doing you know, 125, 150 shot session, swinging out of my shoes, like I walked out of there feeling a lot better than I did two months ago doing that same exact thing. Hmm. So, so yeah, so the working out, I a hundred percent agree. It's something that you should be doing. Um, and I think I just took a very necessary, unique step to doing what I was doing because of my unique swing. And I just mm -hmm. had to learn more about it. I had schedule restrictions. Obviously if I, if I had a full 24 hours of freedom, <laughs> I would, I would figure out, you know, getting yeah. to the gym after yeah. each, each workout. But you know, I adjusted and, and did what I had to do. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the mental component of competing. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, baseball is going to be a little bit different because you got a ball coming at you at 90 miles an hour or you're you're throwing to somebody. Um, how does it change for you if you're then, you know, just looking at a ball sitting on a tee and you've got plenty of time to set up and hit it and think about how you want to hit it? Yeah, honestly, it's 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 one of those things where when it 
when it's when I'm winding up to hit a ball, when I get to the point where I get to the top of my swing where I feel like I'm reacting to hit that ball, that's when I'm my fastest. Almost like I am hitting a pitch coming in. When I'm mentally thinking about hitting that ball as hard as I can, almost like the same kind of concept when you talk about swinging hard versus swinging fast. Um, I get caught in that little bit of, you know, issues when I'm looking at the ball just staying still. Like, I'm like, I want to hit you so hard. <laughs> like, I'm like, and like, <laughs> I'm not like just taking care of the movements and just reacting and being quick. I do do that. And when I do do that correctly, I'm fast and I'm consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, as, as far as baseball and long drive, you know, baseball is one of those things where you could train and hit BP. You could take immaculate batting practice. You'd be a beautiful five o'clock hitter, seven o'clock rolls around. You'd be the worst hitter in the entire lineup. Um, and it happens all the time. I've been there, you know, I've been that guy, you know, a couple of years throughout my life. But, uh, but as far as like long drive, you teen it up, you don't have to deal with that anymore, which is the beauty of long drive. Cause I love watching, you know, and hitting balls and making them go far. Um, but you know, I hated dealing with changeups and, <laughs> and all that stuff. And, um, so, so yeah, I mean, as far as the mental part of it, it's, it is a shift, I would say. In all honesty, you know, I played six years of professional baseball. Um, Besides opening day, I really don't think there's an adrenaline rush, much like standing on the tee box Mm. in an event or like, you know, saying you're on the chopping block. You got to win this last set to get in. That's kind of where I was, you know, to get into the final day of of the championship. Like hitting four out of six drives and play when I really needed it um, was the most exhilarating moment. And and like you see, like people – I always have those comments on social media, like, oh, he's yelling at the ball. He's like a tennis player. But in all honesty, like when you yell like that, that's literally like the, that's all the emotion coming out of you from all those hours you put into hitting that one shot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You hit that first decent one in play, then on your sixth ball, you absolutely destroy it. There's no better feeling than, you know, and I think that, that yelling and screaming you see all these guys do is just a reflection of the time they put into it to do that one thing. And it all worked out, you know, everything times up perfectly. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, and then you, you, you do that sometimes and you get the call back and it's 15 yards shorter than that. <laughs> it's like, wait, wait, yeah, wait. <laughs> that's not a good feeling, but yeah, it does happen. It, it's really, like you said, it, it's like a primal reaction of the hours and hours and hours of hard work. And then you get up there and it just comes off how you want. And it's, it's, it's just an amazing feeling. Yeah. And of course, I'm sure some people yell intentionally and whatever, but usually it happens just as a reaction. You're not thinking of, it's just such a, like a dump of adrenaline and whatever else is going on. Yeah. hundred so, percent. Yeah. And it's, it's rare. No. And in baseball too, you know, long drive, we have events once a month baseball, you know, you're playing every single day for an entire summer. Yeah. So like, you know, there's those rare moments. I remember hitting, I hit a home run um, in the minors. We had a, a bench clearing brawl like earlier in the game. So the crowd was into it. It was like a Friday mm-hmm. night, firework night. So it was like, you know, people were just loud after that. And I remember I hit a, a go ahead three run home run um, in like the eighth inning or whatever. And the crowd was like going, no, our bench was going crazy. Like I was going crazy. <laughs> like it was like those feelings, like when everything's like I needed to come through and I came through. Those are the feelings you experience in long drive when, you know, you connect with one and, and you're celebrating, you're yelling at the ball. But, but yeah, yeah. So do you bring over any like baseball superstitions? <sighs> I would say I'm trying to think if I have any superstitions. Honestly, I haven't really created any in long drive yet. And I, I honestly mm. think it's, I haven't experienced enough like actual, like, in my mind, success in the sport yet. You know what I mean? So, you know, who knows if I start placing, you know, in the top three in events and I'm like, Hey, you know, I put my right shoe on today first. You know what I mean? Like it might (laughs) start in baseball. I tried to, I always try to avoid those things. And I didn't want a a, a stupid excuse of why I didn't do well or anything, but, um, Mm. but yeah, as far as it, I guess I go more through, um, I have more of a routine now. Um, so like I, I guess I I, I go through my quick routine on my daily basis. So like, you know, sometimes if I'm dealing with blisters, depending on how much I'm hitting that week, like I go through and I I just wrap, I rip the tape in half. So I have like small pieces of tape. I do a quick wrap around those spots and then I reach in my bottom bag, which there's several long drivers that come to me now for it, but I have a bag of rosin in my, in my golf bag and I just load up my hands. So I clog my pores before I start sweating I rub them then I rub the towel, then I put my golf glove on. That golf glove is I'm I'm set. I don't have to take that glove off if I didn't want to, but 
that glove ain't going to get too wet for me to swing for the rest of the day. Um, like in Worlds, I use the same glove from the the range to the tee box for all the four days yeah. I hit. Yeah. And um, so I do that, and then I grab my uh, – I, I do a ripstick um, with no weights in it. So, like, I just swing that a few times, and then, uh, and then I go to the lag shot driver. So I do the lag shot driver, and I try to get above 190 ball speed. And then uh, once I get past that, I do my regular driver with my regular swing. I try to get about 205. And then, uh, then I go to my step. I try to get above 210. Some days I'm like 215 with the 46 inch driver. Those are the good days. But for the mm-hmm. most part, I just try to get above 210 a few times, um, maybe two times before I go to the long driver. So, and I told, you know, that's what's the crazy thing about the body and how it works. You know, I'll, I'll be at home trying to get through that session. I'm stuck at the lag shot for like 25 swings. I'm like, I'm using a lot of energy to get to 190. Like, what is <laughs> happening? And then I go to Worlds. I remember the first day at Worlds, I took two shots, and I was at 194. I went from 188 to 194 with the lag shot. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm warm enough. And we're, you know, hmm. we're in Mesquite. It's like that that warm air just, like, warms your body. And you got the adrenaline going. I grabbed my clay yeah. driver. My third swing of the day, I go 209 with, like, and I was like, what is, I've never, I haven't hit 209 with a clay driver with my, you know, with my regular swing almost ever. I think I did it one time before and I did it on my third swing of the day. And I was like, okay, something crazy is going to happen. But, (laughs) but that's the thing about too, like the tempo, I wasn't trying to hit the ball fast. Like I was just fast. My body was just fast. And it's crazy because I even went to the step. I was like up around two fifteen, And then um, I get to my long driver and yeah. So I, I go for my my play driver, I'm like 215. I go to my long driver, I'm like 218, 219 on the range. And I go out to the tee box, I'm like 211, 212. I'm like, what just hmm. broke down? There's, and I, again, I go back to the video. I'm like, I was way faster out on the, the competition tee box. So, hmm. so yeah, there's little, little things that you learn and you watch video and stuff. Like, granted, I hit the ball really well. I'm not mad at that. But um, I executed the shots when I needed them. And, um, but yeah, there's definitely room to grow as far as just that that little bit of break, like walking a couple hundred feet from the <laughs> range to the tee box. Things change suddenly, but yeah. Do you have a record, a ball speed record, with the lag shot driver? Uh, I think two. What was it? The day I hit two twenty six with my uh, my long driver, I hit two hundred six point eight with the uh, the lag mm. shot. So nice. Yeah, and I only gave because I was that was after a uh, I think it was. Uh, like a 75 swing speed session. And um, so I just took two swings with the long, the legs because it's heavier too. So it takes a little out yeah. of you and I didn't want to hurt myself. I didn't want to like break what I had going, but I was like, I'm curious what I could do with this right now. But yeah, it was like 206.8 was the fastest I ever got that too. I'm going to have to see what I can get. I've never tried. I've never measured my ball speed with the driver. Mm-hmm. I've only hit it um, just to warm up before I put the monitor out. I always hit the seven iron, but yeah. Uh, That'll be fun to try. Yeah, it helps me, honestly. And that's what, like, because I switched the D10 this year, which for those that don't know, that's like the flimsiest shaft you could get in long drive. Mm. So doing the lag shot, it was really, it, it helped me out because the lag shot is an exaggerated weighted version of that. So um, so warming up and trying to push speeds, like I could feel when I'm getting too fast in transition. Like when you let that club kind of work itself and then feel fast through the ball to where it doesn't feel weighted anymore, it just feels like mm-hmm. you're really turning those wrists through and it just like works for you. That's like when I go to my play driver, like that instantaneous like like feel I have to accelerate the play driver is like I that, honestly it was it was a big change for me and it, it helped me a lot understand how to move that club head through the zone. Um, when I learned how the lag shot worked for my swing, you know, not everyone would work the way I do with it, but that's how it helped me as far as that. Goes. Yeah. When you, since you brought it up, uh, and I'm, you know, a big fan of the lag shot, but it does like, if you're hitting it multiple times, you feel because it's so whippy and it's heavy, it's got, you know, it's made differently. When you go then to a normal club, there is a tendency to not keep the same like rhythm yes. that you just had. Mm-hmm. But if you can fight that and you can, and just like pretend that you're still holding a lag shot yes. while you're hitting your club. Yeah. It's pretty cool. That's the key. And that's honestly, uh, you use the term fight. That's, that's what I do with my first swing. 
I tell myself, I'm like, fight the urge to sling this fast. <laughs> and I like pretend I'm still holding it. And it feels, it feels like a wiffle ball bat. You feel like you have nothing in your hands at first swing, mm -hmm. but then you feel it right through contact and it just clicks. And like, yeah, that's where like the, uh, I think I posted one the other day on my stories, um, where I was like 209 with my play driver again, but it didn't take many swings to get there. Like for whatever reason, I was really fast, like going from that lag shot to that. It just like, boom, it clicked. And then, mm. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, some days, some days it's just the rhythm just, just works out. Yeah. So let me ask one more thing about the mental side. So if you're in the middle of your set, want to hit it farther, um, want to hit it better, whatever, let's just say farther for now, what are you like consciously thinking? Are there any changes if you, if you know you need to step on one even more? Yeah. So that's where that's again, kind of ties into what I've been saying about the rhythm part of my swing. And swinging hard versus swinging quick. Um, when I'm when I'm out on the competition tee box, yes, I'm like I guess the first thing I go to is my breathing. So like you know sometimes it, I try to breathe fast, like I try to get deeper breaths in and get my heart rate up. Like it's you know where the early sets, like I know my adrenaline's already kicking in. I know I'm going to be fast, so. I'm just trying to find that tempo at the top of my swing and just hit my, my shot shape I want. And, um, yeah, after I get that first one in play, first couple in play, and I know someone's, you know, a couple yards ahead of me, I got to start letting loose. The first thing I go to is breathing. The second mm -hmm. thing I try to tell myself is be light with the grip. Cause a lot of times when I think about swinging harder, I get, I get too tight with the grip and don't let my wrists work. Um, but, but yeah, so like those are my first, after that, honestly, like I look back at video when I was like, okay, I had a really good ball early in the set and I went OB, I wasn't even close and I was slower later in the set and you could tell I'm slinging out of my shoes, like what's going on. And it really is that consistent factor. Like I got way too fast in the back of my swing. It's really easy to do. It really is. Um, mm. And it's funny because I go back to the, to the years I was a pitcher in college, like I was, I was a very effective closer. Like I was very good at closing. And as weird as to say, the reason why I think I was so good is because I didn't care. <laughs> like, I didn't care how hard I threw. I didn't care if I struck the kid out or anything. Like, I knew I threw hard. I had the comps I threw hard. So, like, all I worried about was just balancing, loading up, and just driving off that mound as fast as I can. And, like, everything else didn't matter. I didn't care if he took me deep on that pitch, which it never he never did. But I would I, – like, that was the kind of confidence I had in what I was doing where – I've, I've experienced that in little choppy sections throughout the season, but when it comes time to that moment to hit that drive and you're in that, like, you know, you have to put your best shot in play. I've noticed a little bit of a breakdown in that tempo um, pretty consistently throughout the events through the year. Um, I even look back to Denver, like Denver, I hit a drive. I remember I had back to back sets and, you know, you know, just like anyone else, if you have a really good, like six ball set it's awesome to have a back-to-back -back set yep. if you yep. go ob or you barely squeeze one in play like it's a nightmare to have that <laughs> sets. but i ended up uh i hit my first ball in play it was okay um i think it was like but at the time it was in denver you know good condition so it was like 380 or something but then i i hit my last one good and everything just timed up and i like it clicked i'm like yes that's it and it goes 449. It was the longest drive of the day at that hmm. point. So then I, I switch over to, to slot four. I'm like, that felt, let me repeat it. First drive and play, 429. I'm hmm. like, let's go. Here we go. And I'm like, I got this. I remember turning over and like I'm at the fourth base. I'm next to like, you know, Bobby or whoever's commentating. I was like, watch how far this goes. And all of a sudden, like, my swing just went all over the place. I'm like, <laughs> like I, I don't know why I just, like, got so amped up that I, like, oh, I figured it out. And I look back, and I actually have video of, like, that set from the side. And I, I my back swing sped up times two. Like, it was like, what? Hmm. Why did I do that? Like, in my mind, I didn't feel like I was doing that. But, like, I watched it. I was like, you were doing that. It's like, but, but yeah, so like, you know, as far as those moments when it comes down to like hit, you know, put more into it, you could practice it all you want, but until you're standing there on the tee box, and I think this has to do with experience too. Like the more times I, mm -hmm. I'm in that situation, I'll understand it. Um, and, and I'll be able to make that mental adjustment while having that adrenaline rush. Um, but it's definitely something that, that I'm, I got to work on. Mm -hmm. Well, the experience is huge, like you said, and then also, just, um, you know, figuring out what works for you. If you, if it's, if you're a visualization guy, if you're, uh, it really sounds like for you, your tempo, your 
timing, really p- being patient to load it up, that that's uh, a really cool key um, mm-hmm. that you found. Yeah. So Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, be sure to get in the gym, maybe do like three a days in the, in the off season here. Don't sleep at all. And I'll see you uh, next season, huh? <laughs> yeah, sounds good, man. I'll do no, that. that's awesome. I, I, <laughs> obviously, um, you, you take a very intelligent approach to it. And, uh, you know, working with Bobby, I'm sure you guys will be analyzing a lot of stuff and, and you'll come up with your best routine. And I'm sure you will have a great season. So I'll look forward to competing against you. Absolutely, man. Yeah, I'm excited to to hear what's going on for this year we're all like sitting here like we're excited i think there's some good things going on but yeah no i'm, I'm excited for this year i'm you know I'm, i'll be i'll be training hard just like everyone else is so mm-hmm. absolutely yeah when i had bobby and ryan on they 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 wouldn't say anything about the start date but they were they seemed excited about it as well so yeah yeah i know it's i'm glad honestly my my, my original plan was to move down to south carolina like march which would have made that very difficult. It would have made the training mm. a little better through the off season, but getting ready for the season would have been it would have been tough. So we got yeah. a new we got a new. Uh, my son will be here on January twelfth, so we got a new baby mm. on the way. Wow! So, congrats. Thank you, thank you. So getting everything set up, the gym at home, the indoor facility, like <laughs> that's gonna be a big deal for me to get that stuff set up because I know I'm gonna be I have to be around the house a little more <laughs> for a little while. Yeah. So. Yeah. But. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. I really appreciate your time and learning more about you and and, uh, what's worked so well for you. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Have a good one. All right. You too, bud.